Welcome back to The Contrarian, everybody. I'm Logan Moody. Today I'll be taking a look at a key metric that is showing that inflation is slowing dramatically, that it's likely on a, a short-term declining cycle right now. Um, the organization I'll be taking a look at is called Truflation. They attempt to create a more uh, real-world uh, actual rate of inflation, hence what they're called Truflation. And what's interesting to look about Truflation and what they're predicting the inflation actually currently is right now is that they actually came in about a 12% rate of inflation when inflation peaked back in March or April early this year in 2022 whereas the official CPI back then it really only hit about nine and a half you know nine percent back in June of this year which is still very very high don't get me wrong but um, uh, true inflation actually came in uh, higher earlier than the official CPI. So it's almost like Truflation, their methodology is a little more uh, up to date. It's a little more currently looking at the economic conditions as they currently stand. And actually what's remarkable to look at Truflation right now is that they're saying that inflation right now, you know, mid-December 2022 is about 6%, whereas CPI still is, you know, elevated 7.9, 7.8%. Um, so CPI obviously is a rearview looking metric of where inflation was, you know, one and a half months ago kind of a thing, whereas Truflation attempts to look at current world conditions as they are right now and actually assess where the real rate of inflation is uh, at this current point in time. So they obviously calculate their rate of inflation a bit differently than CPI, hence how they arrive at a different value. But this is very interesting to point out in that it does indicate that, um, that CPI is likely heading lower. They obviously look at very similar metrics for consumer inflation. Um, they look at you know, housing, food, energy, transportation, uh, other odds and ends here and there, communications, internet kind of costs. So things that everybody pays money for. Uh, Truflation tries to look at this in a more current setting, whereas CPI is obviously looking in the rearview mirror at all of those metrics that came in a month ago. Um, but it's very interesting to point out that Truflation, even though they have generally exceeded the official CPI by a good, I don't know, 10, 15% at least in the past, um, they're currently at 6%. So if anything, we could expect inflation and CPI rate uh, to come in actually underneath that, uh, just looking at the fact that Truflation uh, typically exceeds CPI by a considerable margin. But um, nevertheless, Truflation is a very interesting site that I recommend you guys take a, a deep dive looking into. Um, they obviously break down their category importance a bit differently than the official CPI data. For example, food and non-alcoholic uh, non beverages, they say they take 15.3% uh, uh, category importance. Housing, they put 23.2% transport uh, 19.83% utilities, 5.9%, and, and so on and so forth. Um, but looking at the consumer price index, uh, they put a different weighting to each of these categories. They obviously have some categories that are a bit different than Truflation as well. So um, that's how they arrive at different metrics. And unfortunately, the main drawback with CPI, in my opinion, is not only is it maybe the most accurate way of measuring inflation. It's obviously changed a lot since um, you know, past periods of very high levels of inflation. Some would say that that's a way of manipulating the actual rate of inflation to not reflect the uh, enormous asset price inflation that has taken place since then. Um, but the, the real drawback to CPI, in my opinion, is it's just not a current metric. It's, it's a rear view mirror looking metric. Um, and unfortunately, the Fed uh, they've set themselves up in a position to have to refer to this very uh, rear view mirror type of looking uh, a metric. They've essentially anchored themselves to CPI to say, okay, CPI, it you know came up last month, therefore we need to be more hawkish, or CPI came down last month, therefore we need to be more dovish, when they're not actually looking at current economic conditions. They're not, for example, taking a look at all of the massive tech layoffs that have been going on, which is a big uh, canary in the coal mine, if you ask me, because the techs, they are almost always hiring talent. 
um, all of these growth companies, and when they're starting to go under, you know, things are going really, really bad. Um, home foreclosures, um, credit card debt is at all-time highs again. Um, so the things are, are not looking good in the current picture, but unfortunately the Fed is looking at very lagging data when they make their decisions. Um, so that being said, um, Trueflation, their goal is to create an aggregated data feed that most closely resembles what is true in the real world. So the Trueflation Index, for example, is updated daily. <laughs> That's a lot more frequent than the, than the CPI, which comes in once every month and is, of course, looking a month in the rearview mirror. Um, and the price of data of millions of items across the economy. And additionally, each item's price is gathered from multiple different sources to ensure veracity. So they're not taking a look at you know, the price of gasoline in California, randomly including that. They're, they're, they're taking a broad brush stroke approach when they come to their, their numbers. So Trueflation is, in my opinion, a little more accurate than the CPI. And actually, it's, it's much more up to date. So if you want to see what inflation currently is, I definitely recommend looking at Trueflation rather than a CPI. Um, Trueflation, it's interesting to point out that they actually were much more elevated than CPI ever was. So for a brief snapshot of time there, the U.S. likely had a true inflation rate close to 12% this year, which is, is pretty elevated. That's getting uh, way higher than anything the CPI came close to. Um, their methodology differs a bit from CPI, obviously. Um, but the, the real takeaway here, I think, is to see that inflation is on a major um, drawdown from where it was. It was a major uh, upswing that it had, obviously, earlier this year, the uh, invasion of Ukraine and the increased uh, disruption to supply chains and everything that, that sent shockwaves through the system. Uh, inflation, obviously, was mainly driven by energy costs going up dramatically, which therefore increases the cost of pretty much everything. And uh, as a result, uh, inflation is coming down, basically, as those trends revert uh, towards where they came from. So, obviously, uh, this is not a, a perfect metric of inflation either. There's little differences here and there throughout the U.S. economy, obviously. The cost of living varies dramatically, so this is not going to be a perfect indicator for all of us, but a much more accurate indicator, in my opinion. So, all this being said, let me know what you guys think about all this down in the comment section below. Do you think Trueflation is a better metric of, of the real rate of inflation, including everything uh, that the CPI maybe doesn't cover? Um, do you think inflation's coming down, trending down from where it was? And do you actually maybe agree with my kind of uh, hypothesis that I haven't mentioned yet, but that the real threat at this point is a severe recession and actually a deflationary kind of scenario? So let me know what you think down in the comments section below, and I hope to see you all again at some point.